Daddy, the Broncos beat the Chiefs. You damn right we did, son. We serve an amazing God. Sports plus life. Let's go. fighting the cold too though jesus oh why'd you <laughs> why'd you have to do it to me today oh my goodness please allow me to reintroduce myself my name is brandon Bravon towns host of that show called sports plus life that their sports podcast where we talk about all of the necessary topics in sports and all of the necessary topics in life And you heard the beginning of the show. You know what happened. I will get into it when I get into it. Gee whiz, I done worn my damn self out. What the hell? Anyway, I hope everybody is having a wonderful and blessed day. Oh, my goodness. Um, Gee whiz. This is the week of Halloween. Listen, everybody, I hope everybody trick-or-treated very safely. I really do. I really hope that everybody trick-or-treated safely. And um, to my black and gold fam and my fam in general, shout-outs, love you. Uh, Lord have mercy, I wore myself out. And again, I I said I'm going to go back to saying that on the regular because, you know, I I truly, I truly do love my black and gold fam. And before I go further, once again, Too Tough Sports League, Too Tough Sports League, uh, the uh, gaming the Madden Gaming League that is shown on Twitch. The season is about to start. We just had the draft on this past Tuesday. Definite shout out to Two Tough Sports League. Join them. If you want to get into some serious Madden play league, as if you're a gamer and you love your Madden, join Two Tough Sports League. My man Cash Sales got that on lock. And Sports Plus Life is now being promoted from Mississippi to North Carolina. Definite shout out and thank you for that. But definitely thank you for uh, Two Tough Sports League for being that game and system for what it is. You feel me? And also Heather's Craft Haven. You know I got to give my sis from another miss. The shout outs and the promotion. It is that time. It is fall. It's, uh, uh, Halloween is here. Thanksgiving is about to be here and Christmas. And she does her ornaments. All of the above. Plus, she my Springer sister. Again, like I said, my sister from another Mr. Heather's Craft Haven. Hit her up. If you need to get in contact with her, inbox me. I'll let her know. If there's an order you want, please inbox me, and I will send it straight to her. And, um, yeah. Oh, oh. All the BS aside, my grandmother's birthday is this week, and uh, my grandmother, Grace Towns, Amazing Grace, and she is such a special, wonderful, phenomenal woman. Grandma will be 94 years old. And God bless her beautiful soul. And she's going strong, too. I told her that I'm going to DJ her 100th, birth- her 100th birthday party because I promise you she will be getting there. And she's still going to be looking good at 100 as she did at 80 and 70 and 60 and 50. You feel me? Okay. But are you ready? For the realm of sports. Did you listen to the beginning of the show? Oh boy. I'm ready. You ready. We ready. They all ready. Let's get to it. Where should I start? 
I'm pretty sure you would think after listening to the beginning of the show that I would start off with my Denver Broncos against the Kansas City Chiefs. No, I ain't getting there yet. But once again, when we think we have it figured out about this here of the NF or the L, we really don't know nothing. So, oh my goodness. I'm, I'm, look, let me tell you something. I'm just, I'm not going to lie. I am hype as fuck about my team. We haven't beaten the Kansas City Chiefs since 2015. But I will get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Let me start off with the Thursday night football game. Um, what was that? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Buffalo Bills beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 24 to 18. Well, let me say this. A game that shouldn't have been as close as it was turned out to be closer than it needed to be. Um, it took Chris Godwin not paying attention to a perfect Hail Mary pass from Baker Mayfield that allowed the Bills to escape this uh, game with a victory over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a game that, again, shouldn't have ever gotten this close. But there's a there's, there's a bit of undisciplinedness about these Buffalo Bills that exist in 2023. Now, I was talking with Calvin earlier, and we, you know, we were talking about Bucks. He said, you know, he feels better about this team than he did about the team last year with Tom Brady, and he should because... Baker's healthy, have good skill position players, don't have an inside running game. Calvin, I'm sure, will touch on that in a bit. But um, when you're in the NFC South, this loss ain't going to make nor break your goddamn season. Anyway, moving right along. On to the 1 o'clock games. The Dallas Cowboys defeated the Los Angeles Rams 43-20. to Now, the Cowboys do what they do against teams with losing records, particularly at home. They flatlined them. And I'm not trying to take any credit away from the Dallas Cowboys because I thought this was going to be a, a, a better game, a more competitive game than it was. I actually wouldn't have been surprised if the Rams had won this game, but Matthew Stafford did not finish this game. But the Cowboys blitzed the Rams. They were up at one point, I believe, in the first half, 33-3. to um, I picked the Cowboys defense on one of my FanDuel games because I know that Matthew Stafford will give that ball away. And um, for a pick six, and it damn sure happened. Didn't result in any goddamn money for me. But, um, you know, Cowboys did what they do against teams that are sub-500. You can't help who's on your schedule. So I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to I'm not gonna hate on that. The Cowboys moved to 5-2. and two. The Rams moved to 3-5, and five, but not out of their division race. I'll get into that later. In Green Bay, the Minnesota Vikings won their third straight game, defeating the Green Bay Packers 24-10. But boy, does it come at a cost. As quarterback Kirk Cousins, who was red hot, popped his Achilles and is done for the rest of the year. And that really sucks if you're a Vikings fan. Because if you look at the Vikings who won three straight games, you look at their upcoming schedule, you see this team was getting hot at the right time. And the crazy thing is, it's all been without Justin Jefferson, as this rookie Jordan Addison has ascended to being a beast. So I was sitting here thinking before Kirk Cousins' ACL popped, I'm like, damn, Minnesota now has two very good wide receivers. I mean, I mean Justin Jefferson, arguably the best receiver in the league. But now you have a compliment who's actually a number one in his own right, and Addison, then Kirk Cousins' uh, uh, Achilles pops. That sucks. But be that as it may, Vikings are four and four. I hear the chatters, the 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 the, in, the the impatience with Jordan Love. Remember, I will say this again, and I will say this until the rest of the season is over. With remember, Aaron Rodgers' first year after he sat for three years behind Brett Favre, he was six and ten his first year as a starter. Be patient. This year for Green Bay ain't gonna be your year. It just is what it is. Moving on, the Tennessee Titans defeated the Atlanta Falcons 28-23. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, Tennessee has had its quarterback issues. And every time I'm ready for the Titans to die and just get them the hell out the way, they find a new way to reinvent themselves. Well, Ryan Tannehill is done for the season. So we all knew about this kind of quarterback carousel that was going to go on between Malik Willis and Will Levis. 
that carousel is officially over with. Will Levis, that is his team now. Bye-bye Ryan Tannehill. Malik Willis, be comfortable being a backup. Good pay, less stress on the body. Because Will Levis came out there and was gunning that bitch to the tone of four touchdown passes, three of them to DeAndre Hopkins, and a 28-23 win for the Titans. Titans ain't going to win the division. They're not going to win the division. Get that out your mind. Now, as for the Falcons, Desmond Ritter was benched. Now, they were saying it was concussion protocol, being evaluated for a concussion, but I ain't never seen a quarterback who's being evaluated for a concussion have on a fucking headset. I believe he was benched because he was stinking up the joint for a surprisingly a first-place Falcons team. They brought in Taylor Heineke. He made it interesting, but ultimately the Falcons fell to the Titans 28-23. So they're 4-4. Four and four. In Indianapolis, two, three, and four teams, Colts and the Saints. I've been so frustrated watching the Saints offense. I mean, they, w watching their offense has been like has been like watching motherfucking paint dry. But the Saints offense today looked like that Saints offense that I, I expected to see at the beginning of the season. Gee whiz, did they look scary. 38-27 went over the Colts. This, this receiver they have, last name Shahid, he is a burner. Chris Olave, who got arrested this week for speeding, whatever, is a burner. Michael Thomas ain't been the same since he signed that contract, but he's serviceable. Alvin Kamara, the great Alvin Kamara, continues to do his thing. Saints win. They improve to 4-4. Four and four. Plus, they have the best gadget guy in the NFL, that being Taysom Hill. On to Miami. The Miami Dolphins rebounded from their Sunday night loss to the Philadelphia Eagles with a 31-17 victory over the New England Patriots. Miami improves to 6-2. You're doing what you should do against teams you should beat. Now I want to see you beat a team that you're evenly matched with. Dolphins 6-2 in first place comfortably. Battle of New York or East Rutherford, New Jersey, if you will. The Giants and the Jets. How in the fuck did the Giants blow this game? The New York Jets win 13-10, but it was a defensive struggle as you ultimately, I mean, well, it was, it was a battle of backup quarterbacks anyway. If you want to be technical, Zach Wilson is Aaron Rodgers' backup. Tyrod Taylor is Daniel Jones' backup. But then Tyrod Taylor gets hurt. You bring in a rookie from BYU. The Giants are up 10-7, 13-7. It's, no, no, yeah, 10-7. Looks like they have the game won. Giants miss a field goal late. Zach Wilson drives them to kick a field goal going to overtime. Jets win in overtime. A game where I wouldn't have been surprised if the bitch ended in a tie. The Jets are four and three. The Jets are four and three with Zach Wilson at the helm. The Jets are in the exact same position they were in last year. So you know what that means? They ain't going to the playoffs. I don't give a fuck if they four and three or not. They're not going to the playoffs. My Denver Broncos have a better chance of going to the playoffs right now than the New York Jets. There, I said it. On to Pittsburgh. Four and two Steelers, five and two Jaguars. The Jaguars come out with a 20 to 10 win. Ugly weather conditions. The Steelers fought and scratched and clawed to make this game competitive, but it wasn't enough. Trevor Lawrence wins. Kenny Pickett, who I don't believe is a quarterback of the future there anyway, gets hurt. Mitch Trubisky comes in. Um, Steelers defense did as much as they could, but again, like I said, it wasn't enough. 2010, 20 to 10, Jaguars win their fifth straight game. They are now six and two. I was low on them after the first three games, but boy, have they righted that ship. Jacksonville is dangerous. On to Washington, the Eagles versus the Commanders. I don't know what it is about Philadelphia and Washington. They play some exciting ass fucking games. There's only one receiver in the NFL that I would rather have than Tyreek Hill. His name is A.J. Brown. This dude is that nigga. Okay, another two touchdown pass, another two touchdown catches, excuse me. Another game of over 125 yards. That's his sixth straight, which is an NFL record. Jalen Hurts put on a show. Washington's offense was very good, very good. Um, they were talking about possible trades in Washington in the nation's capital. It ain't because of their offense, because their offense showed up in the tune of 31 points. The Eagles, again, like I said this last week, they're a battle-tested team. 
So, and, and we, you know, at the the first month of the season, we were saying, well, the Eagles' offense doesn't look right. Um, have you seen them over the last couple of weeks? And on top of that, on their defense, Hassan Reddick is a closer. This is what blows my mind about why they made the choice that they did in the Jets game. Instead of just running the ball, the Jets had no timeouts, and you pooch punting it and leaving it up to Zach Wilson to drive 60, 65 yards for a game tying field goal. When you have a closer like Reddick and that defensive line, I don't, I just don't understand it. But be that as it may, the Eagles win. They're seven and one. Next week is Cowboys Week. Look out. The uh, Carolina Panthers beat the Texans 15-13. Bryce Young got his first career win. Good for you. On to the late games. Motherfucker, it's that time. Huh? Yeah. My son started off the show by letting y'all know what's up. Let's get it. Huh? With that mile high salute. Man, look. My Denver Broncos finally, finally beat the Kansas City Chiefs and pat a tat tat Mahomes 24 to 9. But it's way more than that, baby. It's way more than that. I know, I know the Denver Broncos are going to be the shock of the NFL week. We just shocked everybody. This 2 and 5 team was not supposed to beat the reigning defending Kansas City Chiefs. But all I got to do, all I want to do is ask, what does Homer-ass Nick Wright, Kansas City Chief fan, first things first, love the show, what is Nick Wright going to have to say about that? What you got to say, huh, Nick? What you got to say? What you got to say? Huh? You make every excuse in the world. Let me tell you something. Every time you make a comment about the Chiefs record, hey, we're going to go 20 and 0. You lost. Hey, you went on Bomani Jones show and said, it wouldn't surprise me if we finished 19 and 1. Maybe what you need to do is just shut the hell up. Because you took that L to my Denver Broncos, baby. What? And what truly made this victory sweeter is the fact that it was a defensive victory. Oh, yeah. This defense that was a national embarrassment, and we were a national embarrassment. Giving up 70 points to the Miami Dolphins in week three. This was a defensive win. Pat a tat tat Mahomes, reigning Super Bowl MVP, reigning NFL MVP, scored no touchdowns, threw for no touchdowns, two interceptions. And what? Now, his counterpart, Russell Wilson, oh, his stat line was nothing to write home about when it came to completions and yards. Only 12 completions for 114 yards, but he had three touchdown passes. Again, credit to the defense because we set him up in short yardage. Look, let me tell you something. I ain't been this hype about a win since we motherfucking won the Super Bowl. And if you're Nick Wright and you wanna say, hey, this was the Broncos Super Bowl, you may be right, sir, but guess what? We won it, we won the, we won the Super Bowl, we won our version of the Super Bowl, so guess what again? What excuses you gotta make, sir, huh? Didn't you just say a couple of days ago, hey, it wouldn't surprise me if the Kansas City Chiefs finish 19 and 1, uh, sorry, sir. All jokes aside, I couldn't be more proud of my football team heading into a bye week, even though we're three and five. I'm not sitting here saying that we're gonna come back and we're gonna make the playoffs and this, that, and the third. But what I've noticed over the last three weeks is there has been a shift in our defense. The offense, while we don't score enough touchdowns to my liking, we're finding ourselves in the lead more in games than normal. We have won three of our last five games. Our defense from has gone from being a national embarrassment 
to a team that over its last three games hasn't even given up 20 points. Our first game against the Chiefs, while we lost that game, the Chiefs only scored 19 points. Last week, our win against the Packers, the Packers only scored 17 points. This week, today, against the Chiefs, we o- they only gave up nine points. This is the def- This is my fucking defense. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I. This is why I was excited when Vance Joseph came back as a defensive coordinator. A month ago, I was calling for his job. But what can I say now? It's amazing what happens when you get your starters back and healthy. When you can run your defensive scheme with the player personnel that you're supposed to run your defensive scheme with. It's amazing what can happen. Oh boy. Now I'm not sitting here saying that we're going to do this, that, and the third for the rest of the season. Because we do have a tough schedule. But I tell you this. Should we stay healthy? Oh, we're going to be a handful for anybody to deal with. I'm going to tell you that right now because Sean Payton's plan and Vance Joseph's plan is starting to come together. And I just love it when a plan comes together. So if I just had my Denver Bronco moment, fuck it, I don't care. You know why? Because the Kansas City Chiefs have beaten the Denver Broncos 16 straight times. We hadn't beat the Chiefs since 2015. I wasn't even doing this podcast the last time. The Broncos beat the Chiefs. My daughter wasn't even born yet the last time we beat the Chiefs. So forgive me if I celebrate, and I'm going to celebrate hard, especially with us going into the bye week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On to the rest of the late games. In Seattle, the Seattle Seahawks, this was a hard-fought game. They beat the Cleveland Browns 24-20. to Again, the Cleveland Browns playing without Deshaun Watson. P.J. Walker was the starter. Cleveland actually overcame a 17-7 deficit to have the lead for a while at 20-17 before eventually the Seattle Seahawks um, took the lead at 24-20, and that was the ultimate score. Why is that important? Why is that important? I will tell you why it's important, because now the Seattle Seahawks with that win, has overtaken the San Francisco 49ers for first place in the NFC West. Alert the media. This is a PSA to the rest of the AFC. Joe Burrow is back. Joe Burrow seems to be back to healthy Joe Burrow. And if that's the case, It is going to be a problem for the AFC North, which right now is the best division in football. It is going to be a problem for the rest of the AFC because the Cincinnati Bengals went into San Francisco and defeated the now reeling San Francisco 49ers 31-17. The Bengals coming off of their bye week Look very sharp. Burrow, 28 for 32. He only in, he was only incomplete for four passes. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. Jamar Chase, 10 catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Joe Mixon, 16 carries, 87 yards, and a touchdown. The Bengals are back. And my one concern for the Bengals was the calf injury because that has been leading to an Achilles injury. I had been preaching it and preaching it week after week but somehow, some way, the Bengals got to 3-3 three and three on their break with Joe Burrow not sustaining any more further serious injury to that calf and the Bengals are back. So, PSA they are Back for y'all motherfucking asses in the AFC. And the AFC North is litty for your titty as the Baltimore Ravens maintain their first place status in that division with a 31-24 victory over those feisty Arizona Cardinals. They are a feisty bunch of Cardinals. They're a 1-17 
but boy, they make you earn all of those victories. And I'm not trying to be funny either. The Cardinals make you earn every victory a team has over them, especially if you're the Dallas Cowboys who actually lost to them. <laughs> but it is what it is if you want to take it there, okay? Now, I should punch myself in the face because in my main fan duel game, I had Gus Edwards starting, but I said, no, I let ESPN talk me into uh, Damian Pierce for the uh, Houston Texans. So I replaced Gus Edwards for Damian Pierce. Gus Edwards goes on to have three touchdowns, and Damian Pierce, oh, fuck him. Fuck, his, fuck that game against the um, Carolina Panthers, whatever. But it is what it is. Lamar Jackson and company. I told, I said, beware the big game letdown. It did not affect the Baltimore Ravens. They, after that huge win over the Detroit Lions, they came right back the next week, win a game 31-24 over the Arizona Cardinals. They are 6-2 and two in that litty-ass division known as the AFC North. So that division stands as follows. Ravens 6-2. Bengals 4 and 3, Steelers 4 and 3, Browns 4 and 3. And that's not the exact order it goes to because the Browns beat the Bengals, so they will be over top of them, but then the Steelers beat the Browns, so they will be over top of them. Over them. Bottom line is there is no team in that division with a losing record. There's no team with an even just 500 record. Every team in that division has a winning record. And like I said, Joe Burrow is back, baby. And it is problems now for the rest of the AFC. Now, Sunday night football was about what you probably would have expected, even for the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, they defeated the Chicago Bears 30 to 13. Ho hum, nobody really cares. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be dismissive, but I mean, Bears ain't going nowhere. Justin Fields ain't healthy. Chargers, Charger, you know, every week it seems like so. And it is what it is. Good win for the Chargers. And Monday night football, the Detroit Lions rebounded from their loss to the Baltimore Ravens, their embarrassing loss, 26-14 over the Las Vegas Raiders. Boy, did we see Devontae Adams look kind of frustrated with a couple missed passes by Jimmy Garoppolo. Man, oh, man, you could see it all in his face. You could feel it in his bones. That boy ain't happy, but the professionalism in him probably does not want to demand a trade. And, um, well, trade deadlines pass. But um, I know I know. probably when the season is over with, he going to want out. As far as, as far as the Detroit Lions are concerned, they've improved to 6-2, and two, I believe, with this Kirk Cousins injury. Um, even though Minnesota had gotten hot and won three straight, I think Detroit has now put a hammer lock on that division, even though it's not even, I mean, hell, it's just Halloween. Um, they're 6-2. and two, a Good rebound win for them. You know, people jumped off the bandwagon that quick. It was an embarrassing loss to the Baltimore Ravens, but they will have other chances to prove themselves. They're 6-2. and two. I still believe in this football team. And the way they lost to the Baltimore Ravens, excuse me, what is the Ravens record? The Ravens are 6-2, and two, tied for first in the AFC. So it's not like they lost to the to a scrub team. They lost to a team that's tied with the, that's tied for the best in that conference. Excuse me. So Detroit bounces back. Now, um, let's have some trade deadline talk, shall we? A lot of defensive moves. Defensive moves were the um, they were the highlight of the trade deadline. Now, for example. The Washington Commanders traded Chase Young. Remember, he was the second overall pick in 2020. Ever since his rookie season, which was fantastic, he's had trouble staying on the field. But he's he's been on the field, I want to say, since about game two since, or game three for Washington. But um, I think Washington, what I think is about to happen with the Commanders, I think they're about to tear it down and rebuild it up because they traded uh, Montez Sweat as well to the Bears. Um this for me lets again lets me know that Washington is about to blow it all up. I believe that this is it for Ron Rivera. I believe Eric Bieniemy will be the next head coach, and because this Washington is supposed to have a dominant defensive line, their their defensive line is supposed to be in line with the Philadelphia Eagles, given all of the number one draft picks that they've accumulated over the years, and that just has not been the case. 
uh, Washington's defense has not been good. I mean, the last time they they, they looked good against the uh, Falcons, their last win. But Chase Young, gone. Montez Sweat, gone. Leonard Williams, he is gone. He was with the Giants. He is now a Seattle Seahawk. Be, be, be mindful of the Seahawks because they picked up Frank Clark after we released him. Now they have Leonard Williams. They have two very good, uh, very good young cornerbacks, especially that rookie number 21. Um, so uh, Seattle looks like they're low key going for it. And actually, Seattle now sits in first place ahead of the San Francisco 49ers, which, with, with you know, San Francisco, remember, just got Randy Gregory from the Denver Broncos as well. So, you know, with them now losing um, three straight games, losing first place, the Philadelphia Eagles have continued to be steady and strong. You're now, again, you're now behind Seattle. You're now behind Dallas. You're behind the Detroit Lions. So San Francisco is saying, hey, we need to make a move on the ball and they're on the defensive side of the ball, excuse me. Rasul Douglas was traded to the uh, Green, was traded, excuse me, from the Green Bay Packers um, to the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo needed another cornerback after, um, you know, Trey White got hurt. Donovan Peoples-Jones, who was really the number two wide receiver on Cleveland, has been traded to the Detroit Lions. So Detroit is saying, yo, we still got to stay in the mix too. Marvin Jones was just released for personal reasons from the Lions. Peoples-Jones is a good pickup for them. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Joshua Dobbs, now in an offensive move. Joshua Dobbs has been the quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals the entire season, has just been traded to the Minnesota Vikings. You figured the Vikings would make a move after the Kirk Cousins injury because the Vikings have a significant, uh, a better array of talent, at least at the wide receiver position, than do the Arizona Cardinals. And that lets me know that Kyler Murray is about to be activated. Because Kyler Murray, for... The reports were last week is that he is healthy, He that he is healthy enough to play. He didn't play this last week. So Dobbs, I believe, will be the starter for um, Minnesota, not this week, but the next week. So those were the major, major moves in the trading deadline, during the trading deadline. So it's just getting excited. You know, the NFL trade deadline is now starting to become like the NBA trade deadline. I'll get into the NBA uh, sh uh, shortly. But now, I want to uh, kind of switch subjects right quick. You know, we ain't had this. Um, we ain't had this topic in a little minute. There's something that came up with a couple months ago called "We Beef It." Biatch. Now, I did a Sports Plus Life talking ish uh, on Friday, talking about one of these subjects, Dwight Howard. Now, last week, late last week, Dwight Howard. Came out with a video, uh, you know, to the allegations of sexual assault that, you know, came out a few months ago by another man. And for lack of a better way to describe it, Dwight Howard pretty much told everybody, you know, mind your business. Mind your fucking business. What he does in his bedroom is none of nobody's business. I don't disagree with that. And I'm not going to be on this subject long. Um, I don't disagree with that. Because it isn't anybody's business. But here's my problem with Dwight Howard. You set yourself up for this, bro. Now, for one, you know, you are a superstar basketball player. No matter how the second half of your career has gone, you, you have a Hall of Fame resume. And he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I thought he should have been one of the top 75 all-time players ahead of Anthony Davis and Damian Lillard. Um, but his resume is that of a Hall of Famer, eight-time All-Star, three-time Defensive Player of the Year. He's an NBA champion now, Olympic gold medalist. So his resume speaks for itself. He should still be in the NBA today. And, you know, from what I'm hearing, these allegations are is one reason why he's not in the NBA today. And, I, I mean, whatever. I mean, I, I don't think – I think that that's stupid because he can contribute to a basketball team. But my issue with Dwight Howard is, again, you are a superstar – basketball player you're a world famous basketball player you don't have anybody in your circle that knows how you get down that you have to go out looking for in effect a booty call 
on Instagram, on fa- on, on social media, you're going to talk that talk to a complete stranger who I'm sure knows who you are, knows that you got a, a, a bank account bigger than something that most people in their life will ever see, and you set yourself up for that, dude. Stranger danger, my nigga. It's like you didn't have anybody in your circle that you could have that could have met your needs that you didn't have to go truly outside the box looking for a stranger on social media. That's my only issue. And then you know the and then so of course the text messages are gonna become public. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I'm gay or anything. I'm just a little nasty. Well, I mean, most people for whatever reason are going to first say i think dwight howard's gay i don't i think he's i think he's bisexual i think he goes both ways i mean hey he like a little boy pussy he like a little girl pussy he like a little wood in his hood you know but he got like a little junk in his trunk because don't he got like eight kids by four different women something like that so he go both ways but it's like when it comes to um men professional athletes with men we don't like to accept that because there we have no problem you know with any WNBA players, any female athletes going both ways or being gay, it doesn't matter. But what I mean, if we can accept the fact that there are WNBA players that go both ways, we need to accept the fact that there are NBA players, there are male athletes, period, that probably go both ways. It just is what it is. But, um, you know, it's part of Dwight Howard's message made me laugh because it's like, you know, he's like, you just mad because I won't text you with your ugly ass. I was like, oh shit, no. <laughs> and I definitely wouldn't have made that post because once again you are inviting people into your business and your bedroom you know the age we live in Dwight Howard when you go on social media and tell people to mind their business they're gonna be all up in your business all up in your business so I mean what I don't give a fuck personally whatever way whatever way what goes on in your bedroom is nobody's business but don't look out don't seek don't seek a booty call from a damn stranger on social media and think that ain't nothing going to publicly get out. Now, as far as sexual harassment, I don't know if you did or you didn't. I'm just really responding to what I heard on last Friday, which part of it had me dying laughing. Not because of what you were saying, but how you were saying it. So that is today's segment of We Beefing. Biatch. Now, before I get my bros on the line, um, it is something that I did find funny and entertaining. And this has to do with the NBA. I know you, it went viral, so I know everybody then heard when Flavor Flav sung the national anthem. Let me say that again. Flavor Flav sung the national anthem at a Milwaukee's Bucks game a couple of days ago. And, you know, the crowd... There's, the, the crowd was actually very enthusiastic because I'm pretty sure everybody in that arena was like, oh, this is going to be good. Let's take a listen. And now, uh, who's joining the singing the stars that are going to perform tonight?
God. <clears throat> you know, the fact that he dragged out the ending and it was like, of oh, the, bra- the brave, the brave, of oh, the brave. The fact that he dragged out the ending was absolutely priceless to me. But I don't know if y'all caught it at the beginning. Um, when you could, this really was the first video that I heard where you could actually hear the crowd's reaction, and they were very receptive to Flavor Flav. I mean, he's a legend, you know, whether you, he's, a, he's a legend, he's a, he's a legendary entertainer. But I don't know if you heard at the beginning somebody in the crowd, somebody in the crowd yelled, Hey, take your hat off. Now, Flav, you know what you're gonna get if you, I don't give a damn what you got Flavor Flav, 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 Flav doing. You know you're going to get the hat cocked to the side or the Viking hat, the sunglasses, and the motherfucking clock. And he came out there with the hat cocked to the side, sunglasses, and, of course, the motherfucking clock. But, of course, there's always somebody that want to say, some old over-patriotic-ass, bitch-ass nigga that want to be like, hey, take off your hat. Y'all, listen, listen again. And now, uh, who's joining the singing star that shit hey take your hat off no fuck you bitch ass nigga you take your motherfucking hat off if it mean that much to you you ain't the one out there performing you ain't the one out there entertaining shut your bitch ass up and listen to the damn song because it was a classic for all the wrong reasons but shut up hey take your hat off take your motherfucking hat off old bitch ass nigga you stand there and shut the fuck up leave flavor flavor alone and he's out there destroying a song that but but it, it was no malice whatsoever. It's Flavor Flav. You got to love him. My only question is, who the hell who the hell agreed to that? Because if I'm one of those basketball players in that line, I am dying laughing. Wasn't as bad as Fergie. Damn sure wasn't as bad as Carl Lewis. But I think the fact that Flav dragged the song out was just so special to me. It really was. Okay. I just had to get that one out there. Yeah, boy. <laughs> oh, man. And speaking of yeah, boys, I got a special one today. I got Sean, Tony, Calvin. What it do? What's up? What's going on? What's that? All right, well, um, Calvin had asked about Sean, trick or treating. I wish the tricks was treating, brother. So I went trick or treating today at Walgreens. You what? I got that 40% off candy. <laughs> I know, that's what I should have did. <laughs> All right, so I have Calvin. Now, listen, you guys. Calvin specifically asked me to have make sure I had Sean and Tony on today because it's Eagles Cowboys week. Because Calvin has this notion that me and Sean gang up on him when we all on the phone together. I do not gang up on you. And Calvin, I really need you to speak up, dude. I said you do. Don't you listen to the podcast. Why don't we turn this thing up, man? Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. I just, want you, I just want the mic to pick you up good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm right here. I use my big boy. <laughs> well um first of all well okay don't think that i'm high on the hog because my broncos upset the chiefs okay i'm not um but it was a good win um so i'll start off okay i'll start off with uh the eagles fan mr sean what was your takeaway from the overall weekend of this past week of football I ain't gotta come at me first, bro. <laughs> but I ain't gotta mind me. You see, I'm over here getting beat up. But, uh, bye. Thank you. All right, cool. She leaving. I can turn this damn grease. It's going to the fuck off. <laughs> yeah, damn. It's almost so E I E I and over the thumbs I can take. You hear me? Ah, I feel you. It's nice to know somebody gives you a hard time, though. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Uh, all right, let me get back to my sports frame. It was in uh, daddy. You was, in da- you was in daddy mode right quick. It's all, it's all good. Get out. Get the hell out. <laughs> oh, this weekend. Man, 
shout out to uh, Joshua Daniels. Sorry, man. Uh, I can't believe them boys. Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, we all knew that was going to happen in the Robins for that game anyway. We start with that Detroit game. I, I kind of, I, I think I picked Detroit anyway, but. Everybody picked Detroit. Mess. Yeah, it's been, it's been a mess, bro, ever since that boy. They, then he got rid of Gary Carr for some damn Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't know what the hell he's thinking. He, he brought that man over there for goddamn Gary Carr to get rid of him. They deserve that. They deserve all that shit. Leaving that. Getting out of here. Uh, girl, stop. Uh, shout out, uh, I'm. Shout out to my Eagles birds. You know, we got our game. We won our game. Uh, it was a tough one. It was hard. I know a lot of people talking about our addition with Kevin Byer. You know, not looking good, but that boy just got there. But our secondary in general did look pretty damn horrible. So I'm kind of worried about this Cowboys game, especially with Jalen Bear. But, you know, it is what it is. You play when you play. Uh, great stop. The Ravens. Uh, Will Levis. Surprise, surprise. Um, didn't that boy I look mean, good? That boy look good, but you know what I'm saying? I'm like, dropping dimes to let you know Malik Willis still going to be riding the best. I was going to say, welcome time. to the world of a backup, Malik Willis. <laughs> they need to go ahead and go ahead and ship him. They should have shipped him over there to, goddamn, uh, to the Vikings or something like that. Let that man get some playing time because he ain't getting it now. Now that boy that did that, then you got Tannehill. Yeah, he, he might be a good trade. I'm surprised he ain't, he ain't go nowhere doing the trade you did, Larry. Who's going to pick up a, a, a quarterback that's out for the rest of the season? Hey, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's injured, ain't it? Yeah. I'm pretty good. My fault. All right, we'll share. That's why. Well, you still trash. Uh, well, he going he gonna to end up being a trade bargain for the offseason. I can tell you that much. Oh, if you come back healthy and pass all his physicals, if Will's continue to do what he's doing. Um, Miami's still, well, nobody was surprised about that. Miami doing their thing. Uh, sorry about Kirk. Uh, yeah, and speaking of Kirk, I'm sorry about that. That man being gone for so long. That was pretty sad that he, uh, that man career ended. Ain't he like a free agent or something? He's a free agent, agent after, yeah, he's a free agent after, yeah, he's a free agent after this season, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty tough for them. But they, they seem like they still want to do the thing. They, they going to get their quarterback like they doing something. Um. Major news in Washington, though, with the Chase Young to the 49ers. Some boys loading up for us, ain't it? And Montez Monte Sweat to the Bears. That lets me know that they're yeah, blowing the whole there. thing up. Yeah, they're blowing that thing up, which, I'm for, uh, which, which is rough because I, I've always been an advocate for the commanders. Honestly, they, I just felt like they was a quarterback away, so I don't – that got to be coaching, bro. Bro, that defensive line, on stay, bro, that defensive line is supposed to be on the level with y'all's, and they're not. They're horrible. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, that's that. That I, I mean, that's talent you got there. And if them boys, and I'm gonna tell you like this: if they go to where they go and they show up over there in the Bears and or the 49ers, that's coaching, bro. I don't care if you talk about scheme or anything like that. That's coaching because them boys had it. number one picks all across that D line. They should have been doing better than what that is. And the one year um, that they went to the playoffs, they were seven and nine. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, and let's see here. The uh, the surprise, surprise. The motherfucking Broncos beat the Chiefs. What in the hell is that? Uh, nobody seen that coming. I, I surely did, but I, I surely didn't. <laughs> I did not. I'm nobody not even gonna put. I am not even gonna pretend like you. I knew it was no. I had no idea. Yeah, like uh, that was a big shocker. Like I, I don't know what's up with the Chiefs. I mean, I. I I know what's up with them. The boys ain't running like they used to. With the Pacheco ain't doing what he's supposed to be doing, and that boy needs some more people to throw to besides uh, Kelsey. So uh, that was pretty shocking. But y'all defense was pretty good anyway. And Russell Wilson finally showed up to do something. And, 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 and they really ain't won't even really Russell Wilson. The defense put him in short yardage. Russell Wilson only threw yeah. 414 yards. You know, hey, the, the, look, this he, game was all about the defense. Something. Yeah, I mean, our defense has played better the last three weeks, and I mean, hey, good win. Yeah, I wish y'all lost because <laughs> y'all was ready. Y'all was ready to blow that thing up, and I wanted some of them playing. Hell no, here. nope. Everybody's staying out. They just they um they called uh, Sean Payton uh on early on Halloween. They said, uh, "Is Denver any any of you guys uh players in play to be traded?" They said, "No fucking way." I'm like, "That's right." Nah, they ain't doing it now because that's gonna be the Chiefs. There's a little hope up in that motherfucker. If I can do something, they ain't gonna blow it up. Are you joking? I mean, we already got rid of Gregory. That the Forty Niners got Gregory too. We got rid of Gregory. We got rid of Frank Clark. That's it. Yeah, that's that. That was not to hurt, y'all, because they won't produce it on y'all side, was it? Not a, not at all. 
So, I mean, that really ain't hurt nothing. You get some people behind them time to get on the field and do what they yes, got Yes, the, young, the like younger players. The younger players on the D-line yeah. have been stepping up. Calvin, you up? What did you What did you think of What did you think of last this past week of football? Um, I don't know what the, I, I I think Bill Belichick taught uh, Josh Jacobs how to cheat. He's he not a coach. He like wherever he go, wherever he go, once you can't get one, you can't get that little little cheat shit down pat. It's just a wrap. Like I think one of y'all ex players said it. I think I think it's what's that linebacker name? DJ, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, I remember. He's on the podcast. He's on the podcast, and he said, uh, you know, he, he had never been so prepared in his life for that stuff from when he was with the Bronx, with the Broncos, when, when Josh Davis did. Once that that that, that video tape came out, everything changed for them. So he just he never takes his own message. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I kept saying that the Chiefs were going to be got one of these weeks. I had no idea it was going to be right, y'all. But God damn. <laughs> that was all right. That was, that was okay. Um, for the uh, Washington, they are doing that. Um, they, they are here. Yeah, they are scrapping that. That's the that, that, that front four is supposed to be right now doing what what it's supposed to be like. What the Browns are doing. What the fucking Eagle? What the Browns and the Eagles are supposed to be doing? Yeah. Be enemy. Another podcast. Be enemy. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? That was, I was about to say that's another podcast. That's a, 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 a question for another podcast. Um, my team, like I said, we ain't got no running game. We ain't got no interior running game. Everything's outside with a uh, Rashad White, no bitch ass. We gonna be what we gonna be. Um, bro, Baker dropped that hail mary perfect, bro. He dropped that bitch right at Godwin's feet, bro. Baker Murray. Baker Murray. Baker Murray. <laughs> Baker Mayfield has ten touchdowns. In no running game. So I ain't worried about making a fucking baby. Um Burrow feel like he came back like a crack, but it looked like you know what I'm saying, it's getting it, it, it ready to crown and taking it north. You know what I'm saying? But you can't just do that just yet, you know what I'm saying? So they actually play each other and still we be more out of the fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? So Burrow, Burrow is like, okay, I'm back. Oh Burrow's back, baby. Burrow is back, yeah, baby. When I saw that motherfucker run up the middle, up the gut of that San Francisco defense, I said, oh, yeah, he back. He good. Yeah. You shall, you shall see. You know what I'm saying? Um, fucking, who else? Who else? Who else out there? Who else is out there? Did the Jaguars get played in the Uh, yes. Jacksonville. Um, they, they beat uh, Pittsburgh. They beat Pittsburgh, yeah. They beat Pittsburgh, yeah. Um, uh, shout out to them. They still looking like they No, they've already um they traded for uh Joshua Dobbs, the quarterback for the Cardinals. Oh. Oh, is this Kyler Murray back? Kyler Murray, eh, eh, he's healthy. He can play. Well, it's a four way it's a four way tie now for the number one seed in the AFC. All each division leader is six and two. Um 
So yeah, yeah. Um, any anything else, Calvin? Yes, sir. All right, Tony. What was your takeaway overall from this past week of football? Uh, I'm I'm gonna focus on the the trades and non trades because pretty much everything that has been said, I mean, that needed to be said, has been said. Um, other than you know, my team, you know, I'll quote, in the screen, they are. Who what we thought they were. I don't know. I don't know what the hell my team is actually week to week. Uh, but anyway, in terms of those trades, I I think the uh, I think they all kind of remain to be seen. I, 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 Josh, Josh Dobbs, that makes sense. The others, like Chase Young, I think people you know they overrate that trade. In the same way, Randy Gregory going to the 49ers, Randy Gregory has shown, you know. He is not dependable. Yeah, he's shown that he's capable but not dependable. What is Chase Young? Capable but not dependable. Um, it, it depends out for him, good. But it, it's not something that I, I even really think about. Um, in terms of uh, uh, Bayer, if that's, how, yeah, if that's how you pronounce his name, in terms of him, um, Pro Bowl safety. Congratulations. Um, if that transfer, if talent transfers, then it helps their secondary. Um, the Eagles secondary. But other than that, I mean, Kirk Cousins, that's a that's always a messed up thing. I don't care what you like Kirk Cousins, think he's a good quarterback, bad quarterback, whatever. Um, that's always kind of messed up to see, you know, and something like that. Because those are the kind of fluke things. He's a, a professional athlete, so you think you know, these things wouldn't happen, but they just take one step and blow up, blow out of Achilles uh, type thing. So, I don't know. But that's my take on, on the overall week. Okay. Um, the way I looked at the trades, I looked at it as uh, defense, really defense carrying the day. Um, you know, Leonard Williams getting traded from the Giants. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got one more thing. Okay. I got one more thing. The Leonard Williams thing will help the Seahawks, but they're still not going anywhere. But um, the one more thing is about your Broncos, sir, uh, and not about the Chiefs win. Y'all actually were on the phone talking because you were talking to us. Linebacker, what's his name? Who? What are you talking about? On your team, Broncos. Josie Jewell, um, Browning. Josie Jewell. Uh-huh. Josie Jewell. As the price was too high. The asking price was too high. Well, good. That, that I, been I would like all through Dallas reporting that that, that, that that there was one person, one team that we talked to that whole time, and the asking price was too high, and so it never got any real legs. Well, good. I don't want my Broncos trade nobody to the fucking Cowboys. No. <laughs> okay. No. I mean, I, and to, I, I, I like, I, but I, different after y'all go back to what you always have been this season. After you know, you did your world beat. Uh, thing. Hey, you might feel different. Hey, look, I'm just happy with the win. I was on the phone with Calvin for damn near all of that game. Even when the whole time we was winning, I was cussing us out. So, I mean, I'm just happy with the win. I like Browning. I like Jonathan Cooper. Uh, I like Josie Jewell. I like the young pieces we got on defense. Is one game. I mean, now, could it be? Am I saying, and I said this early on the show, Am I going to sit here and say, yeah, we coming, da-da-da? No, I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that since, I mean, I mean, you can't get no lower than giving up 70 points, but the defense over the last three weeks has played very well, giving up 19 to the Chiefs the first time, 17 to the Packers, and then 9 to the Chiefs again. Um, I think we're going to – I think we'll be a tough out for anybody. I mean, we, we don't play this week. Then we come back and play Buffalo and then Minnesota. I think we could split those two games, you know, but I ain't sitting here saying playoffs or none of that shit. Nah. <laughs> um, as far as Josh McDaniels goes, and I, I don't know if you, I mean, I'm pretty sure you guys agree. The Bill Belichick coaching tree sucks. It sucks. What'd you say? <laughs> yeah, I mean, people who branch off from after coaching the Patriots, they they they're horrible. They're horrible. And for Josh McDaniels, and some people are just meant to be coordinators. Josh McDaniels, 
Now, this is the second time, because when we fired him in 2010, he didn't finish this, his second season. Same thing with the Raiders. You get rid of Derek Carr for Jimmy Garoppolo? But let's be fair. Let, let's be fair. They, they, they don't make good head coach candidates, but coordinators, they can't have some success because, I mean, Romeo Cornell, bro. He's part of that tree, ain't he? He is. Oh, yeah. He is. The only person who's had some real success is not even Romeo Cornell. It was... um. Um, the offensive coordinator, Bill O'Brien. He's the only one who had any type of real success, consistent success. Everybody else may have had one good year, like Romeo Cornell, um, like his old offensive coordinator who used to be the Notre Dame coach. Um, other than that, they suck. They're terrible. Uh, Josh McDaniel's best string of coaching was the first five games when the Broncos started, no, the first six games when the Broncos started 6-0 in 2009. And we didn't even make the fucking playoffs that year. Ever since then, he's been trying. The one this the the one good thing that Josh McDaniels did as a coach is he drafted Demarius Thomas to the Broncos. And he drafted Tim Tebow. That's it. That's it. Not a good coach. He's a good coordinator. But but how good of a court no, I you know what? I'm not going I'm not even gonna throw the Brady thing. I give him a good coordinator because when he was the coordinator, his last year as a coordinator with New England. He helped Mac Jones get to the playoffs. And that's where he'll be back next year. So Bill O'Brien, I hope he makes hope he does his best. And then after that, pack your shit. Cause Josh McDaniels will be right back there. In hell. I don't know. Huh? I need you to come closer to your phone, Sean. No, I said I don't know where he at. I know he um he ain't with New England. He is not with New England. <laughs> now allow me to switch sports for a second. Um, going to basketball. I'm not talking about Dwight Howard. No. Um. James Harden, this James Harden trade to the Clippers. Tony, I'll start with you. How do you feel about that Harden trade to the Clippers? I don't care what James Harden does. The, the, the Clippers, one of their assets, I think, was their depth. Um, particularly because you don't, you don't, you don't expect full seasons out of um, the stars in LA so the depth is going to bench and all that stuff and then their asset they weaken themselves by that by acquiring art and I don't think it makes a mark any better I just, I just don't I think the Sixers wanted to be out from under him so that was good for them um, but other than that I don't think it I don't think it makes them better or worse it's just like you accommodate it almost is like you, you were just accommodating hard and everybody happy now, so it ain't no drama, kind of thing. You know, that that's how I look at it. All right, Calvin, would uh, James Harden, you know, just his his um, third team, and since twenty twenty one, what do you think about this uh, deal with the Clippers? Well, this trade with the Clippers. Uh, that's another thing that these come out of not gonna be happy. Yeah, you got the 30s and up club now. Sean, Sean, um, what do you think of James Harden now being a clipper? To be honest, I think that shit has made me, made me, made me got worse. 
bringing that nigga in there because who's to say that he's gonna match with somebody <laughs> he left with it in, in uh, Russell Westbrook because uh, he just got acclimated to that thing. He's been looking good over there. And they all like ball dominant people. I mean, when they are on the court for the most part. So I'm like, it's only one ball. And then on the other side, like, they're not really playing defense like they like they thought. They got rid of a lot of defense and depth on their game. You know, James Harden ain't playing on damn defense. Maybe Russ will, but Kawhi will be injured. And Paul George ain't playing like they play they, like, uh, so By I the way, like, side note, Sean, P.J. Tucker was in that trade. P.J. Tucker's yeah, a clipper, too. P- yeah, I know P.J. Tucker was in there. Like, well, who's fuck P.J. Tucker? That nigga's on the bright side of 32. He, he needs a damn long-term care plan. He's about to get his ass put in the nursing home facility, too, with the whole ass. I'm just trying to figure out, like, who, who's playing defense over that thing. So I, I don't really... I don't really think, I mean, with all those dominant people over there and all those those egos, even if they were on the court like that, I, I, I really don't. I, you're going to have to just show me because I don't think that's going to match at all. If you got somebody who's never been satisfied anywhere you go or all these super teams and nothing has happened. So, I mean, if you go over here and don't nothing happen, James Hart, you might want to go here and retire my butt. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. I, um, I, look. I low key, I low key root for. I've been rooting for the Clippers because I want to see Westbrook. You know, ever since Kobe retired, I always said Westbrook was my favorite player. And Westbrook was a horrible Laker, but I know, but I know he's such a better player than that. And I just, I didn't like bringing James Harden because James Harden's not a winning player. Um, he's not. Um, now I understand why because of the fact, like Tony said, and like like all of us said, like Sean just said, you know Kawhi gonna be hurt. And Paul George is going to miss his certain amount of games, too. So if you're just looking for insurance for when, not if, when Kawhi Leonard misses 80% of the motherfucking season, you got it. Um, Not really concerned about what they gave up because, yeah, you gave up defensive players, but you gave up three 34-year-old defensive players who was averaging, un- each of them was averaging like under five points a game. You didn't have to give up Terrence Mann. You didn't have to give up Bones Highland. You didn't have to give up Zubots. But and matter of fact, the Clippers play the Lakers tonight. Um, so, but I mean, I understand why the Clippers did it, but I wouldn't have done it because James Harden is basketball's biggest diva. He's a malcontent. As soon as things ain't going his way, he ready to be out. So, you know, it is what it is. I mean, and PJ Tucker will add a certain level of toughness. He, he's tough everywhere he goes. Um, and the only thing he gonna do on offense is stand at the corner and shoot a three. Mm-hmm. That's it. Corner shooter. Yeah, that's it. Corner specialist. What y'all think about uh, how y'all think Milwaukee look right now with uh, Giannis and Dame? Right. Sean, Sean, you go well, first. I'm sorry. Like they're supposed to look. Huh? They look like they're supposed to look as if they never made a trade for Dame. Like they didn't change anything. They were good. They look still look good. Yeah. Um. So, well, who would so? All right. Well, Tony, who would you take if right now? Just you know, because this season just started. But who would be your favorite to to win it? The Sixers aren't done, by the way. That that ties into your question. The Sixers aren't done. You know, I was telling you the other day that I think we should train to train Levine. Levine is going to the Sixers. For who though? That's the rumor mill. It, 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 they ain't giving up Maxi. I tell you that. They, they want to. Well, first thing they want to unload is is a uh, uh, old boy's contract. Uh, Tux Bias. Tobias. They want Tobias. Yeah, they want oh, Tobias okay, okay. To get out there. And then they got picks. The problem is all these picks are not. They're not good picks. So the Sixers are going to have to ass up something. Um, what that something is that'll make AK go ahead and say, yeah, I don't know, but but I I think yeah, we trying to blow it up. They want to go ahead and see what they can get for uh, Levine. They want to ship DeMar down to maybe Miami or, uh, or, or something to a contender because he wants to go to a contender. Um, he'd want to go to a contender, but still got to give up something just because he's an expiring. He, he's on an expiring contract, too. DeMar? So, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, DeMar. So you, you got to hey, send him to a contender because, you know, because he's going to want to go there and do a do a right by that. Plus, it's got to be a team that's thinking that maybe they'll resign him as well so there's that uh, but it just depends it depends what the Sixers up the end to because they, they have to give up more than what they're offering Tobias Harris expiring plus um, some late picks that's, that's just not going to do it and they, they're late picks and they're years off it's not like they're all like 
next year within the next couple of years. These are picks down the road. 2029 it's like that. Yeah, that that's what the, um a couple of the low, a couple of those picks were um that Philly got for this Harden deal. They got like 2028, 20, 2029 20, deals like nobody gives a fuck about that right now, but okay, yeah. That's what they're trying to flip into Zach Levine, and that's what I'm saying. They're not AK is not gonna do that. Well, nobody in their right mind will really do that. Well, we shall see. Basketball is really just getting his feet wet. I don't pay full attention to basketball until football is over with. But now, fellas. I get, but I did wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I ain't there. You, I thought, I told you. But remember, I did say Denver. Oh, yeah. You did, you did say Denver. Denver. You think Denver's going to repeat, right? Yes. What about you, uh, Calvin? Who do you think who do you think is early season favorite to win it? Uh, it's so early right now. You got to go. Right now. I go with what about you, Sean? Right now, Shane, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say Denver, too. You know, because it's early, you got to go with it. Right, well, and they still looking good. I'll be that oddball. I'm going to say Milwaukee. I'm going to say Milwaukee. But I would love to see Denver and Milwaukee. I know the NBA wouldn't like that shit, but I would love to see Denver and Milwaukee in the finals. Um, But now I'm going to go back to football. Sean. How you feeling about the 49ers right now, sir? Man, the motherfuckers can't got to go get Superman and they just going to be team. We still going to beat their ass because I'm so sick of them crying. And they going to get every pass rusher they can find to put on their damn team. Hell, they might as well call goddamn Mike Strahan off of Good Morning America to come back and goddamn be on their line too because they going to need his ass too. It ain't they fucking defense that's been the... I mean, well, it is, but they defense because Nick Bosa ain't really been doing what Nick Bosa been doing. They say he been getting pressures and shit, but whatever the fuck. Ain't nobody listening to them. Brock Purdy ain't looking like Brock and Roll no more. It look like hot broccoli. Let me just sorry. That motherfucker, he doing that. Can't, can't get without Debo, his little weapon. He can't really do nothing. He, he been looking real pedestrian. So, but I, I mean, but... uh. They can keep stacking 18, whatever they want to do. I'm still not worried about them at all because my my line is still, I mean, my, we already been shut Chase Young down twice this motherfucking year. We can do it a third time if he want to come back, nigga. He can, they trying to get inside scoops. That's the only reason why they, they got him. They're like, look, Chase, what they doing, bro? What they doing, bro? So they can get a little help, but whatever, bro. We, I ain't worried about the 49ers. They still going to be trash, bro. Okay, so now I'm a, um, before we make picks, I'm going to start with you, Tony. Top five teams in the league right now. NFL, right? NFL. Top five teams. Well, the defending champs are about to fall the top five teams because they took that L last weekend because he only threw to Kelsey means nothing. Because uh, he was throwing to Juju Smith, Schuster. And that was a Juju no ain't a chief no more. That's what I'm saying. No, that's what I'm saying. He was throwing him last year and it didn't matter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because Sky Moore, that nigga need to go back to the sky because he ain't it. Right. So he had a lot of nobody. Dudes like Pacheco, you know. They, I mean, who, who hell knows who that dude is? Well, G fans and now people that watch Super Bowl know who he is. So, Swifties. I, I give them that. They're the, they're the number one team. Um,. <sighs> I'm going to say, uh, I'm, I'm going to say Chiefs, I'm going to say Eagles, I'm going to say Cowboys, I'm going to say, um, Dolphins, <laughs> and I think Purdy been exposed, bro. That's the problem. I think Purdy has been exposed. Um, yeah, I don't know that fifteen. Okay, well, screw it. And the forty, I guess it's the forty nine ers Okay, all I right. Guess, I guess I guess it's the forty nine ers All right, uh, Calvin. Are you, are you saying are you are you saying Chiefs are the number one team? Yeah. Yes, you I still do. think the Chiefs are the number one? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We we saw this. We we saw this act play itself out last year. I don't give a damn about regular season ish. They went to the Super Bowl, they won it. At the end of the day, until somebody knocked them off, 
They the defending Super Bowl champs. Not the Eagles are the regular season champs. Everybody Eagles exactly. are the regular season champs. That's what they are. Okay. All that regular season record did not win them the Super Bowl. So that's what it is. The, the defending champs, the defending champs, until they get knocked off. Prove you can beat them, and then you have a champ. So, so let's say the Chiefs were four and four right now. Would you still have them as a number one team? I've seen that. We've seen that Chiefs play out too. That's the crazy thing. We've seen it play out. We've seen the Chiefs get off to these starts where it looked like they're not even gonna make the playoffs, and all of a sudden, some mid-season. Turn. I haven't seen. I haven't seen that in the past. I haven't seen that in the Patrick Mahomes era. What them being four and four? Yes, I've never seen them be four and four in the Patrick Mahomes era ever. Uh, I have. When? I have. Please tell me I when. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you're talking to somebody else and getting their picks, I'm gonna pull it up because the Chiefs were like, okay, I mean, it, 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 literally, the table was saying the Chiefs, man, like you make the playoffs based on the way they started out, and then sure enough, mid season turn. Next All right, season, yeah, you know, you, you pull up a time in a Patrick Mahomes led regular season where the Chiefs were ever four and four, and I will shut up. You you prove you show me that one, okay? You show me that one. Cause the Chiefs, the Chiefs ain't never been no. Maybe at one point, maybe two and two, but four and four, nah, nah. Maybe you may have two and two, but four and four, nah. But okay, Calvin, you're five. Uh, Eagles, fucking 49ers. I think. I think the. I would probably think the Browns. Um, I think the Lions are the top five team, and I think that's three. So we're gonna go. I think the, I think the, I think the Ravens are the top five. Team. I got one more. Um, who else out there doing anything? And I still think I still think the um I think the Bills are they're record on respect, but I think they are. Okay. Okay, so who are your five again? The Chiefs, the Eagles, the 49ers, the Ravens, and the, the Lions. Is that five? Yeah, that's I'm five. Okay. Yeah, kick the Bills off. Yeah, yeah, you kick the Bills off. Okay, um, Sean, you're up. All right. Let me get this door real quick. I'll be back. All right, all right. Uh, so we gonna say uh, we talking right now, right? Right now. All right. So I mean, right now, uh, my math is right. Seven is one. It's better than six. <laughs> all right. So we gonna go with the Eagles first. <laughs> <laughs> then we gonna go with the Chiefs. Then I'm gonna give it the matter. Matter of fact, I ain't, yeah, I'm gonna give it to the Chiefs because they the Super Bowl champions. Then I'm gonna give it to the Ravens. Then I'm gonna give it to the Dolphins because I know when they get when they get in their corners back, they get Ramsey too, so that's gonna be pretty big for them too. And then I am going to go. What to say? I ain't putting no bitch ass forty nine to them. Say the Lions. Okay. All right. No problem. All right. Um, I'm gonna go five up to one. And um, let me get this out there about the Chiefs. The Chiefs are the Super Bowl champions from last year. I don't give a fuck about that. They have, they're not the Super Bowl champions of this year. They're not number one or two on my list. They lost to us. God damn, we're not good. Um, um, okay, so number five. Now, nigga, we gave up 70 points. I don't give a shit. That was that game. That was, that was I know. I get. No. I get. Hey, look. I was. I was the one saying that they were that they've been better over the last three weeks. But number five for me is uh, Detroit. Detroit. Um, they bounce back. I'm not going to hold them hostage for the way they lost to the Ravens because the way the Ravens played that game, they would have beat anybody. Um, I'm going to put the Ravens number four. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to put the Chiefs number four. I'm going to put the Chiefs number four right now. I just said why. 
Number three, I'm going to put Baltimore. I'm going to put Miami. Excuse me. The only reason why I actually have Miami on this list is because they're in first place. Because I hold them to the same standard now as the Cowboys. Beat somebody who's worth a fuck. They'll get their chance. Um, number two. Um, oh, shit. Who do, oh, number two, Baltimore. Number two is Baltimore. I got Baltimore number two. Low key. Lamar doing their thing. And they didn't have the letdown after the eye popping win against Detroit. And number one, Philadelphia. It doesn't matter if they're winning like they did last year. A win is a win. They're 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 the most battle test. They're battle tested. They're the most battle tested team of this season. Um, and again, seven and one, and keep doing what they're doing. Um, so now let's get into these picks, Tony. No, 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 no. You said why you make picks? Because you want to pull up a time that the Chiefs were four and four with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I want to see that. Um. Calvin. It is pick making time, brother. All right, let's go. All right. Thursday night football. First game, Tennessee at Pittsburgh. I can barely hear you, bro. I'm going Pittsburgh. Okay. Miami. Now this game, the Sunday morning, nine thirty in Germany. Miami versus Kansas City. Miami, Kansas. Mhm. Miami versus Kansas City. Yes. Kansas City. All right. All right. Next game, please. Minnesota at Atlanta. Minnesota at Atlanta. Who you going with? Atlanta. Okay. All right. Arizona at Cleveland. Los Angeles Rams at Green Bay. Uh, I tried Green Bay one more time. I'm tempted to do that too. I'm, I really am. Better because it's a dumb. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm tempted to do Green that Bay. too. I, I tried Green Bay one more time. Um, Washington at New England. Washington. Okay. Chicago Chicago at New Orleans. Uh, New Orleans. Yeah, last week, last game was the best that the Saints looked all season. See, and that's a good game right here. Seattle at Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore, Baltimore. You said you're going with Baltimore? Tampa Bay at Houston. Houston. Who? Houston. Boy, you ain't got no faith in your squad, boy. I know the voodoo, though. I know the voodoo. Indianapolis at Carolina. Oh, man, oh, man. Is, is Richardson, it's been a month. Is he back? No, nah, he's out for the rest of the season. <laughs> the Giants at the Raiders. I mean, yeah, the Giants at the Raiders. Uh, the Who are you going with? The Giants. The Giants. Okay. NYG. Dallas at Philly. Ooh. What about they going to lose? <laughs> so I and I can't pick food line and I can't pick um towards our run, so I gotta go with this. 
Buffalo, Buffalo at Cincinnati. Uh, is Miller back? Yeah, he's back. I know he's back. I mean, he's on a pitch count, but he's back. Oh, I need this game. Dang, I need it. Uh, fucking, I go for a Can't stop now. Can't stop now. And the, um... Monday night football game, the Chargers at the New York Jets. Uh, Chargers at the Jets. That's what they say. Let me go with the Jets. They always surprise me. Okay. Calvin's picks are as follows. The Steelers, Chiefs, Falcons, Browns, Packers, Commanders, Saints, Ravens, Texans, Panthers, Giants, Eagles, Bengals, and Jets. Is that correct? Hey, Tony, you got that Kansas City information for me? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Yes, sir, I do. Kansas City Chiefs, that long stop. Kansas City? Kansas City Chiefs went three and four and then ended twelve and five on the season. All right. Boy, he boy, he did it today. He did it today. You won't be back. I'm just you know what? Yeah, no, he is right because I forget that year Tennessee was the number one seed because they were twelve and five too. How about that? Well, they didn't win the Super Bowl that year, so you know. And but that wasn't the first thing you said in Patrick Mahomes era. Oh. Four and four. Thought it again. You're doing it again. <laughs> yes, no, he, he is absolutely right. There you go. Absolutely right. Now, well, are you ready to give your pick, sir? All right. Okay, let's see. Let's start off Thursday night. Well, look, Tony just tried to sun me on the podcast. Hey, Atta boy. Um, <laughs> Tennessee at Pittsburgh. Oh, man. I don't want to get on top of it. Can't put it down there. All right. Give me a steal, man. That's a, that's a tough game to pick, right? It is. Yeah, it is. Okay. Okay. I reloaded. So you going with the Steelers? Yeah. All right. Um, Miami versus Kansas City. Uh, give me Mahomes. Give you Mahomes. Yeah, I think they pride was there. Y'all heard they heard that man pride. Now you got to come out and prove worth another. Endorsement for a commercial. You goddamn right we heard his pride, motherfucker. We'd have lost it. We never had beat him before. They can get them Swifties together and get Kelsey motivated. Oh my god. I'm so sick of that shit. Hey, it's funny thing, funny thing, a side note about that. I pointed this out to my wife. Every time he catch a ball, they're gonna show her. But even when his teammates drop a ball, they show her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They don't show Beyonce as much as they show Taylor Swift. Um, okay, next game. Min- uh, Minnesota at Atlanta. Give me Atlanta. Yeah, because they already, they already said that um, Josh Dobbs ain't starting this week. Right. Arizona at Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland. Okay. Rams at Packers. Packers. 
Okay. Washington at New England. Washington. Okay. Chicago at New Orleans. I keep picking against them. So I'm gonna take the Saints this time. <laughs> first place Seattle at first place Baltimore. Tampa Bay at Houston. Indianapolis at Carolina. Carolina. The Giants at the Raiders. fuck's playing quarterback for them? Uh, Tyrod. Tyrod went to a hospital oh, last game. Huh? Tyrod? Okay. Yeah. Tyrod went to the hospital. He got knocked out and was sent to a hospital last game. Uh, I mean, have they not announced that he's not going to play next week? That's the thing. Yeah, you know, they might have been doing the more cautionary. Who knows? Okay. Um, right. Well, that's true. That's true. That's true. I don't know. It may be. Um, it may be time for uh, Tyrod to hang it up. Um. Okay. Let's see. Oh, Dallas at Philly. Hey, you should pick Philly. MP11, bro. MP11. Okay. All right. I got an MP3 too. Um. Buffalo at Cincinnati. Um, you know what? I want to do my Chris Berman. Nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills shit, but give me the Bengals. Okay. So I think the Bengals won't circle the wagons. And the Chargers at the Jets. Uh, Chargers. And the Eagles. The Chargers. Yeah, man. That don't work for them a lot, but yeah. Okay. Tony's picks are as follows. He has the Steelers, the Chiefs, the Falcons, the Browns, the Packers, the Commanders, New Orleans, Baltimore, Houston, Carolina, the Giants, the Cowboys, the Bengals, and the Chargers. Is that correct? All right. Sean, you're up, brother. Okay. First Thursday night game. Titans at Steelers. And they get them Steelers. <laughs> All right. Miami versus Kansas City. I'm going to take Miami. Okay. Just mm-hmm. fuck that one up. <laughs> Minnesota at Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta. All right. Arizona at Cleveland. 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 Right. I, mean, I mean, they just got rid of their quarterback for starters. Man. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, the Rams at the Packers. Uh. Right, Washington at New England. Uh, I think they get they just got rid of their whole line, but uh, <laughs> but uh, they got they got a nice little team behind them. But I need to catch up, so I'm gonna go next New England. Okay. Yeah, you ain't, you ain't even you ain't even yeah you ain't even second place, Sean, no more. You like seventh place, Sean. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Chicago at New Orleans. New Orleans. New Orleans. Here. Seattle at Baltimore. I'm gonna take Seattle. Okay. Tampa Bay at Houston. Tampa. All right. 
Indy at Carolina. Carolina. All right. Giants at the Raiders. Uh, I think the Raiders going to win because fuck Josh McDaniels. They're probably going to be excited that they're going to try to play some good ball. So, uh, mm-hmm. And the Giants ain't the Giant, ain't giant in, so I'm going to go ahead and go with the uh, Andy guy rolling the Williams. Good, good game for Josh Jacobs to go ahead and do his goddamn thing, so I'm going to go ahead and get the Raiders. Okay, okay. I like the way you're thinking, sir. Um, Dallas at Philly. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck are you going to say about that? I mean, shit. All we got to do is run the ball at NP11, and we going to get about 300. <laughs> <laughs> Make them work for it. <laughs> Buffalo at Cincinnati. <laughs> uh, let me get Buff- uh No, it's going to be Cincinnati. Okay. Joe Burrow out there looking like a track star here. Yay, Burrow back. Um, the Chargers at the Jets. Uh, let me get the Jets. Okay. Okay, here we go. Sean's picks are as follows. He's got Pittsburgh, Miami, Atlanta, Cleveland, Green Bay, New England, New Orleans, Seattle, Tampa Bay, Carolina, the Raiders, the Eagles, the Bengals, the Jets. That sound about right, sir? Okie dokie. Now I'm going to make my picks. I've been waffling back and forth about this Tennessee versus Pittsburgh game because as good as Will Levis looked, I don't know. I, I can't believe that he gonna do that against Mike Tomlin defense. So yeah, I got to go with Pittsburgh. I've really been going back and forth about that shit. Um. You do it, then you gotta believe in right. Right. Exactly. Do it on the road. Um. Miami and Kansas City. I'm going with Miami. Um, because Miami needs it. Miami needs this game more than Kansas City because they need it for their psyche. They need to prove that they can beat a credible team. So I'm going with the Dolphins. And it's not like it's at Arrowhead Stadium. It's in fucking Germany. Um, uh, let's see. Minnesota at Atlanta. Atlanta. Minnesota's starting a rookie. Um, Arizona at Cleveland. Cleveland's going to bounce back with that defense. I don't give a fuck who's playing quarterback for Cleveland. Um, Los Angeles at Green Bay. I'm going to go with Green Bay. I hate to go with Green Bay, but I'm going to go with Green Bay because I don't know about Stafford Thumb. So, yeah, go for it. Green Bay. Um, Washington at New England. I'm going with New England because, Sean, of what you said. They just got rid of their whole fucking defensive line. So, Belichick is going to have um, Stevenson and Zeke toting that rock. So, yeah, I'm going with the Patriots. And it's at New England. Yeah, I'm going with the Patriots. Ron Rivera, no, he about to get the fuck up out of Dodge. Um, Chicago at New Orleans, I'm going with New Orleans. Seattle at Baltimore, Baltimore. Tampa at Houston, I'm going with Baker. I'm going with Tampa. Indian at, Indy at Carolina, I'm going with the Panthers as well. Giants at the Raiders. Uh, yes, I believe that Antonio Pierce, who is the interim coach, who also used to play for the Giants, won the Super Bowl with them. I think he's going to have them hyped up. Um... To at least win one game. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Raiders, begrudgingly. Dallas at Philly, like, the Cowboys are who I think they are. They beat bad teams. They lose the good teams. I'm going to, I'm going with Philadelphia. Um, Buffalo at Cincinnati. Burrow back, baby. Bengals, Bengals. And the Chargers at the Jets. Game nobody gives a shit about. Well, I guess the Jets are 4-4. Four and four. Um, Damn, the Chargers find ways to lose games better than any team in football. But um, I'll go with the Chargers and win this game. I, Brandon Staley need to be fired. Okay. So, anyway. All right. So, my picks are Steelers, Dolphins, Falcons, Browns, Packers, Patriots, Saints, Ravens, Buccaneers, Panthers, Raiders, Eagles, Bengals, Chargers. <laughs> okay. What? Well, <laughs> well, fellas. Mm. Hey, though, man, but uh, it's gonna be a tough. I, 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 I just want to let Tony know that I don't think we just gonna smack y'all. I think it's gonna be a tough ass game because our secondary week and my quarterback hurt. So it's gonna be a tough game, but uh, it's two days. Right. Determine that game. 
this is going to be two things, three things. But that versus y'all ain't trash. That is trash. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't. He ain't, he ain't two against us. He ain't two against us. But um, there's two things that's going to determine that game. And it, and it ain't going to be that. Dak is going to do what Dak does. Because for whatever reason, he plays well against the Eagles. What's going to be the thing is, it ain't going to be MP11 on the line stopping the run. Mike, they don't play him. Now they're moving him back and forth. They're letting him blitz from his natural position. Let him rush the passer from his natural position sometimes, which puts him in a position to be able to stop the run. He's weak against the run when he's on the line. He's strong when he's at his middle, at that, at that linebacker position. They need to go ahead and let them front dudes do what they do. Let Hankins and them do what they do. And stay in their lane. That's the key to Hurts. Every team that, that he struggled against this season has been just staying in your lane. Stay in your lane. Limit to him getting outside and extending. Because if he extends, he's your D. That's it. It's, 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 it's been the same. It's easier said than done. But every team that has done it, that has a strong defensive front, just stay in your lane. Don't do not give that extended play. You can give him a little running lanes, but don't give him the extended play to be looking downfield missing sacks. Because the dude escapes sacks more than anybody. Dudes be having him in the dirt, or so they think. And then, you know. Well, that's the reason play. why, uh, oh, why I'm worried. worried. Huh? That's the reason why I'm worried. Because his knee is injured. That's what I'm saying. If you, if you, uh, I don't know if you look at any of our games, but if you look at our games, he's not moving the same. He's, he's not busting out of those pockets. He's he's actually staying in the pocket now and throwing it. When he does get out of the pocket and he runs for that one yard, uh, that one a couple of yards, he's physically limping. So he's injured right now. So that's what I'm worried about because y'all do have a hell of a defensive line that'll, that'll close in on it. And I'm pretty sure they know they can smell the blood in the water. That's the problem. If he can withstand that and stay upright and we can keep y'all off him, then it'll be a game. But if we can't and they don't run the ball, then y'all go smoke us because he ain't going to be able to do nothing. He ain't going to be able to move. He can't move, he can't move like he used to right now. He need that body. He need that help. And quiet is kept. Remember I said that. Matchup number two. That matters. Even if he ain't moving. Deron Bland versus... Um, uh, Mr. Brown. Oh, don't you think they'll have him on? Um, don't you think they'll have no. him on Devonte Smith? No, no, I don't. You, you would think that would be the case because of Stephon Gilmore's age, and maybe they will because Gilmore Gilmore is a bigger corner um, and is used to the physicality. So maybe they will. In fact, AJ that. Brown is killing but, everybody right now. But, but to be fair. But to be fair, well, this is what DeRon, Deron Bland excels at, and it's crazy because he, he's a down-the-line cornerback. Um, and, I, and honestly, I trust him more than Diggs. Why? Because Diggs gambles, and if he misses, it's, it's, it's just gone. Deron Bland does the ball hawk thing, but he'll make the tackle if he misses. Um, that's the thing with Bland, keeping the ball out of your hands. He gets the turtle. He gets that pick just like the kill game. Um, Diggs gets the pick, but he gets burned a lot. Bland doesn't get burned. He'll get that pick and not get burned. So, you know, they play differently. They just play differently. Diggs will be seven yards off the off the wide receiver trying to get an interception. Bland plays it like it's supposed to. He jams him and then still plays the ball. So that'll be a, that's gonna be a big thing. Gilmore versus it, it's gonna be AJ Brown versus either one of the cornerbacks is going is what's gonna decide the game. I'm not so much worried about uh, Demonte getting a big play unless Hurts gets out of that pocket. Well, the next time we come on this podcast, that matter will be settled. So, fellas, it's been oh, huh? No, wait a minute, wait a minute for, for him. There's one other matchup. Uh, uh, Bell, hybrid safety, Marquise Bell, hybrid safety, linebacker, because Dan Quinn like playing fucking little ass safeties at linebacker versus Goddard. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, well, it's, you know, it's going to be the most, in a weekend of good matchups, um, this is going to be, of course, the most hyped up matchup. I'm glad it's a 425 game, too. Um, I just actually wish that the Miami Kansas City game was a 425 game. That wake 9:30 in the fucking morning. But anyway, 
fellas, we shall see. We shall see. Hey, and if you notice, I didn't say any of your secondary versus CD because that, that, that last week they changed up. Finally, they changed up. So he's not playing any either side or the slot. He's in all the positions. So everybody's going to have to defend CD at some point. Well, my secondary trash, so, I mean, it don't even really matter. It, 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 they just need to show up like they showed up against Miami. That's the only thing I would hear. If they can show up against Miami, they can cover anybody, but the, the commanders got their head in. Had my secondary look crazy, and I don't know what it is. But uh, I mean, but I mean, same worry that I would have against the Commanders would be against Dallas because again, it's a division game just as well. Yeah, y'all know each other. We know each other, so it, it can go either way. And like I said, that the Panthers though is okay. Sam Howell, Sam Howell. But outside of that, when you look at their skill position, they got skill position dudes. That's legit. Yeah, oh yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's why they gave us them hits to hell. Because they set up, they, they match like us. And that's why I said that they blew up their team. That it had to be coaching because they got the team to do it, bro. So you, you got rid of the wrong niggas quick. You, know, you should have got another coach or something like that. Because that, that thing, that's, they got a team over there. And I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, bro. I don't know why the commanders can't be good because they got a good team. That team, that organization has really had a good team for the last about six, seven years, all the way back to when Alex Smith and Adrian Peterson was playing there. I don't know. I mean, but I think um, I think that'll be Bienemy's job next year, and I think Ron Rivera knows it. So, because you're a defensive guy, and the side of the you're the head coach, but you're a defensive guy, and your side of the ball is horrible. And you have the talent to do it. So it is what it is. But fellas, I'm going to get on out of here. So um, it's been real. It's been fun. And I will hit y'all up later. All right. Oh, man. Forgive me if, um, forgive me if, um, you know, you struggle to hear him any. It really was a battle because, um, my other phone was acting up, you know, acting like the feds was listening. So I had to go, you know, through my celly. But um, y'all got the point. Y'all got the gist of the idea. You know, it's it's um some it's some showdowns that's happening this Sunday. And uh, yeah, and we ready for it. We here for it. We here. But before we get out of here, I just wanted to I had to mention the black eye that my beloved boxing took uh, the other day. Excuse me. A fight that I paid no attention to because it's one of those crossover fights. Tyson Fury. Um, seen as the lineal heavyweight champion of the world, which means the man that beat the man who was the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, even though he only has one belt. Fighting Francis Ngannou. Um, turned out to be a real fight in Saudi Arabia. A fight that I believe that Francis Ngannou won. You know, I'm not queuing up the boxing music or anything like that because I'm not going into it in detail like that. Tyson Fury either was out of shape or just was not um, prepared to fight. Maybe he was concussed or whatever, but I believe he lost the fight. He got dropped. And shout out to Mike Tyson because Mike Tyson trained in Gatu. Maybe some people need to be looking at Mike Tyson as their trainer. But anyway, with that being said, with a buzzer, with a buzzer, with a buzzer. Oh my goodness, thank you guys for being so patient with me. I clearly, I do have a cold. I have a cold, and um, I'm trying to fight through it because I really shouldn't even be doing all of this talking because I have this play coming up at Saint uh, at First African Baptist Church. Um, and I can't wait to do it. I really can't wait to do it, but I'm just, oh boy, I'm just this cold, this, this crazy-ass Virginia weather. I mean... Um, the day before Halloween, it was 85 degrees, and then on Halloween, it was 49 degrees. That's just crazy. But anyway, before uh, we get out of here again, Two Tough Sports League uh, on Twitch. The season is getting ready to rev up, and I will definitely keep up with the stats for the Two Tough Sports League. Shout out to my man, Cash Sale. And um, don't forget to hit that subscription button and become part of the Sports Plus Life family, as well as Brave On Towns on YouTube. It's your boy, as just mentioned, Brandon Bravon Towns. I'm out this beer. Peace. <laughs>
Love you. I'm going to try to get better.